Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Inspirational Vibes with Sabrina, a part of the Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Network on PositivePower21.com. Today, I will be talking a little bit about uh, what it means to say goodbye, what it means to let go of things, and what that closure may provide for you. And I want to start off with a poem that I wrote that is a part of my book, Poetic Rhythms of My Heart. And it's entitled, Goodbye. I now know why goodbye is the hardest word to say and the hardest expression to release. It means that you are closing something or someone out permanently or temporarily. It means that for a moment in time, you may be dismissing the possibility of connecting again. It means for a moment or for eternity, you may be closing a chapter or losing a friend. You may be putting an end to something that you are holding on to with a slippery grip at best. It means that you may, might be letting go of a buildup of pain, frustration, and confusion that caused your mind unrest. It means that a tear may break free from your eye and roll down your cheeks, revealing the emotional roller coaster that's leaving your thoughts oblique. The fear of the unknown for your fate, who next, what next? still causes a strain. After you have uttered goodbye, those realities remain. But sometimes, that compound word is a must that must be uttered from one mouth to another ear. Sometimes it is long overdue, late by weeks, months, or years. But nonetheless, when it is done, there is little else to do but sit back and watch the hellos revealed that were awaiting the arrival of you. Goodbye. And that just gives a preset to what uh, the message will be a little bit about today. And that is just that in life, sometimes we do have to close things. It may be a person that we have to let go of who is causing more damage than good to our lives. It may be a job that has completely burned you out and is causing you physical unrest, whether that is sleepless nights or stress or worryation, which we all know are bad for our systems. It may be letting go of a place that you once lived in and called home because uh, for some reason or another you need a fresh start. So goodbyes come in a variety of forms. It could be a thing or a person or an idea. It may be a thought pattern or a habit. Sometimes we have to say goodbye to smoking and excessive drinking or drug use or some of those things that can be damaging to us or cause us some type of uh, legal ramifications if we went through with them. So it is a variety of things that can come up in our lives that we may have to let go of. I remember going up, my mother used to tell me to be selective of the people that I hung out with because birds of a feather flock together and she would always warn me that sometimes you know we can not mean to do a certain thing or not mean to um, witness or be a part of a certain thing but because we were with someone who may be doing it it may rub off on us or we may get tied to it even though we weren't directly involved so sometimes we have to say goodbye to those people who may be most familiar to us because they may be going in a different direction than we are in our lives. And the older we get, the more mature we get, the more times we may have to do that. And that can be a very hard thing to do, especially, like, as I said, if it's someone that is familiar to you, someone that you may have been a part of their life for an extended period of time. In those cases, it is more hard to let go of those type of people. And sometimes a person may let go of you, and you may not have seen it come. Um, I remember in this one particular instance, I kind of like offended someone and I didn't even mean to. And they were a very good friend of mine. And after a while, I just noticed that we weren't speaking the same way anymore. And it wasn't because I didn't want to, but it was just because they had taken a step a step back and taken offense to something that I thought was so small, but it may have been much larger to them. So sometimes someone may let us go. And we also have to be willing to deal with and accept that because what we can't change is what people do to us. We just have to react to it the best way that we can and accept those things that we can't change. 
It's just like the serenity says, that one part in there, the serenity prayer, you know, where it says to allow us to accept the things that we cannot change. And sometimes that may be being let go out of someone else's life. I remember one time I was dating this guy. He was very nice and, you know, he was a little bit older than me. But I could never really figure him out, you know, very well. But um, out of the blue, you know, it was just like, poof, it was over. And I was just like, well, I really don't know what happened, you know. But it was one of the best things out of my life because later on, I found out some information about him, you know, that he shouldn't have been trying to haul at me anyway, you know. But um, in life, those things do happen. It can be someone telling us goodbye or it can be someone or something, again, that we have to let go of. I know um, in, uh, one of my family members, she was recently told that um, she needed to leave the place that she was dwelling because they had just outgrown that place and it wasn't the best environment for her and her son. And, you know, like she's now, you know, like uh, just think about, you know, that prophecy that was given to her life and, and what the, the best thing, you know, to do about it is, you know. Because she knows that there are some situations or whatever that she has been going through with it. But there's still a big step and a big decision that you have to make and finalize. So again, goodbye can be a person, a place, or thing. Just like the nouns. You know, it can encompass anything or anyone. But in life, we do come across those things that we have to decide when, how to let go of. And um, that would mean telling it goodbye. Bad habits, again, you know, um, smoking, if you do it long enough, it's going to cause cancer. If we eat too much excessive fried food over and over again, it can cause heart disease down the line. If we add too much salt to our foods, you know, it can cause damage to our heart also and, and, and cause high blood pressure, for example. Um, if we smoke too long, it can cause lung cancer. If we drink too excessively, it can cause liver damage. If we have a habit of cursing people out, someone can knock you out the right way that you don't even come back from it. Or you can insult the wrong person and they can come and get some heat and blow your brains out. So sometimes we can cross the wrong person. So there are those habits sometimes that we have to say goodbye to. But in order for us to do it, we must f first recognize that it's a fault. There is no habit that we can break or change if we don't first admit to ourselves that we need to let go of it. That it's not the best for us. If it is not making you a positive person, if it's not building someone else up and building yourself up at the same time, and I like to add pleasing to God, then those are things that we need to let go of because they're not becoming to us and they're not becoming to God if that is who indeed we are trying to serve, emulate, and be more like. So those are things that we always have to keep in mind. And be willing to change. Sometimes people get so stuck on, well, this the way I did it, this the way my mama did it, this the way my daddy did it, this the way we do where we from. That doesn't make it right necessarily though. And even if it's me, even if it's you, it doesn't mean that it can't change. It doesn't mean that we have to stay that way just because it's a habit that we developed, you know. And it just because it's a certain day of the week or a certain time of the year doesn't mean that we have to do certain things, you know. So sometimes it may be, again, some type of habit that we need to break away from and just tell it goodbye and tell it that we are no longer going to be inclusive of that in our lives. So always be willing to do these things. And one of the more even harder things could be saying goodbye to someone that we have fallen in love with. Sometimes we can get involved with the wrong people. People that bring us down emotionally, heaven forbid, physically. But sometimes, you know, people get caught up in domestic type of situations where abuse is going on. And verbal abuse is very real as well because it leaves emotional scars. Someone who is constantly putting you down, devaluing who you are as a person. These types of things can be damaging to our inner core and our inner being. It can damage our minds. 
It can damage the way that we see the world and the way that we see ourselves. So we do not need to be a part of any type of abusive relationship. So those are definitely types that we need to say goodbye to. And sometimes you just outgrow the person that you're with. And I'm not talking about married couples. For I believe, you know, in the sanctity of marriage. And I like, you know, you know, but if you are just dating someone and you're feeling them out, you know, sometimes you may have to take a step back and say, well, this isn't the right person for me. But of course, if you're getting, you know, physically abused, I'm, even if you are married, I'm not saying you know, whether or not to leave that type of situation. But I was just talking more on the lines of those who uh, may be dating, you know. Um, sometimes we have to close those type of doors. Or sometimes things can come up, you know, where it's like, you know, I just can't handle this particular part about you. So if you're not intertwined too deeply yet, then sometimes you have to pull away from even loving relationships. And it's not that you don't longer love that person or want to disrespect that person. It may just not be the best fit for you. So sometimes we have to decide on those types of things. I remember one particular time this guy, you know, um, he had expressed some interest in me. But I come to find out that he uh, didn't believe in God. And that was just like a big no-no to me. I'm like... You know, I um, attend church regularly. I love God. You know, I don't do everything that I should do the way that I should all of the time. But I do love God and I try my best to keep my relationship with Him. So when the guy told me that he didn't believe in God, I knew that not only could I not date him, I probably wouldn't even be the best friend to him because our whole belief and value system would be so off that it's like, why even bother, you know? And, of course, that doesn't mean that I'm saying um, I couldn't talk to an atheist or I couldn't, you know, communicate with them. I would show them love and respect just like I do anybody else. But there's a certain level that I would take that, you know, and I know that that's just my beliefs and my value system, you know, that I just, you know, I, I can't date somebody who doesn't believe in God. You know, so... Those types of things and those types of situations, when we see danger ahead for us or, you know, a total disregard for who we are or what we believe in, sometimes we have to say those goodbyes before they even become a real hello, you know, before we allow them into us too uh, deeply. Because as we know, you know, the deeper we go with something, the harder it is to break away from. If you have been smoking for one month, it's easier to stop than if you allow years to pass. But we don't want to get to the point where it becomes a cancer to us. And that is in any form, you know, a cancer of hurting us, you know, a cancer that is hurting our bodies, our minds, or anything. So whatever that thing may be for us, not just smoking, um, but whatever that habit that, that we don't really need to hold on to, we need to tell it goodbye before it fosters too much damage to us. So always be willing to do that. And sometimes it may take counseling. It may take leaning on the ear and the support of others. You know, learning from others how they broke away from it. How they're best able to deal. If you have to move from an environment, where do you go? How do you start over? Sometimes it may take reaching out to someone else and, of course, stepping out on a lot of faith in order to make those types of moves. How do you say goodbye to a job where you have your benefits already aligned? You already know what is to expect of you, even though, you know, it, it keeps you up at night and makes you sick. Still, it's something that you already have, something that you already can say, I know is there and it is paying my bills. Well, again, it takes faith. And it takes starting to apply for different things. You never know what door can open sometimes until we be willing to close another. Um, a particular friend of mine, you know, I know he ended up losing his job because uh, he got laid off. You know, they no longer needed as much staff as they, they uh, did before. But because that door closed, it allowed him to go into his own family business. And now... He and his wife are training their sons on the crafts that they have and the skills that they have so that they can too be begin to foster that entrepreneurial spirit. 
So sometimes good buys can be rewarding to us if we look at the possibilities that lie ahead of it. Closing doors and letting go of things, that's the hard part. But sometimes you never know what lies ahead until we're willing to make that step, until we're willing to make that good buy. So I challenge you, if it's something that needs to be done, then do it. I remember in 2000. And nine in 2010, my job had just gotten a little rocky. You know, the relationship just wasn't the same between my supervisor and I. And, um, you know, I, it was as if I couldn't do much right anymore. Even though I was the same person, I got the same evaluations, I met the same demands that were always there. But something had changed. And I still tried to do the best I could. You know, I didn't do everything perfectly every single time, but I tried my best. And it was as if the best that was once superior was no longer good enough. But no one could see the other side, only could see me because I was the subordinate. And I thought it was so unfair and so unreasonable. And I, you talk about I had some sleepless nights. And I had already developed or, you know, like already been told that I had a heart condition. So this was like on top of what I knew that was going on with me medically. I had this extra stressor that was becoming heavier and heavier and heavier. I know I stayed too long. By the time I left that job... And, by, and I had already been dealing with external things, you know, like my boyfriend had passed the year before in 2008. So on top of all those things, the job being what it was by then, I didn't leave it until my doctor told me, okay, you no longer could work. You have a heart condition where you have to come home today. And I was like, what do you mean? I'm like 28 years old. I'm not ready to retire permanently nor temporarily. But I had to say goodbye right then and there to something that was not only paying my bills, but it was sustaining me, you know, um, allowing me to travel sometimes. It wasn't all bad. It was just that one little, you know, relationship had soured. But my job was great. But my doctor made the call that, okay, you can no longer stay out of CHF events. So I had to suddenly say goodbye. I went to one last doctor visit, and he gave me news where it was like, yeah, you got to check out today and go down to MUSC for some further tests and evaluations. But working, you can say goodbye to that suddenly. And it was like, what do you mean? But who's going to pay my rent next month, my mortgage next month? I had a house by then. And it was like, um, who's going to pay my energy bill? And where am I going to get insurance from? If I have this heart condition, how am I going to still be able to afford my medical expenses? All of these things were brought onto me suddenly. And for the next six months, I had to wait on disability to kick in just to see whether I'd be approved. But because of my heart situation, I was, thank God. But you talk about a period where you had no income and still had to say goodbye, still had to say, okay, you're no longer going to work full time, maybe not ever again because of your heart condition. Talk about some news for someone who had worked three jobs at one time just the year before. So it was a shocker to me. I was used with being an internal auditor and teaching part-time for one, two, one time even three institutions on the side because I taught online as well as in the evening at different institutions. And I loved it. I loved it. You know, even though it probably was too much on me and I didn't realize it, I loved what I did in both jobs. And suddenly this working girl who was used with nothing else but working since I was 15 or 16 years old, I had a job. 
suddenly 12 years later, 13 years later, you're telling me I have to just close it up and say goodbye to it all. I was not ready for that day, but I will never forget when Dr. Gattapati told me that. And he transferred me straightway to MUSC, the Medical University of South Carolina. And so goodbyes can be sudden. They can be the news that you don't want to hear, but sometimes we have to do it anyway. So fast forward to um, about seven or well, six years later, you know, I'm still doing well. I don't work, still don't work full time, um, but I'm able to do other works. I'm able to do my little side business where I consult with people. I write resumes for people. I write customized poems. I've released my poetry book, so I'm able to do those things that I probably wouldn't have taken the time to do before. So whereas one door closed in a sense, I had to close my office door because I had my own office. I had to close that part of my life, but God allowed me to do other things and develop other passions and go back to other areas that I probably would have left closed. So he opened those things. Goodbyes always yield to an opening of something else. But we have to be wise enough. We have to be acceptive enough. We have to be humble enough. Because sometimes it is humility that blocks us from saying goodbye or closing something. You know, I don't have to do that. I don't have to put this down. I don't have to leave this because I want it or I am used with doing such and such. Sometimes it is just an act of humility that allows us to say goodbye to what we need to. It may not always be what we want to do, but sometimes it is the very thing that we need to. So just know that as one door closes, it's one thing that we have to eliminate out of our life. There is always something greater. Even right now for me, I need to make up in my mind that I'm going to reduce and even, uh, I don't want to use the word eliminate because it's so hard to completely eliminate carbs, but drastically reduce them in order for me to get the result that I want in my weight loss journey. I need to do that for me. So whatever it is for you, whatever it is that you need to say goodbye to, realize it. Accept it and be willing to take the steps to do it. And I am preaching to myself too because I know that there are some things that I can cut out. I can eliminate the, the amount of time that I spend on social media some days or on my online gaming sometimes. I just enjoy playing spades sometimes and sometimes I do it a little too much. You know, just on my light days where there's nothing else going on. But there's always something even more that I can be doing or spending my time with. You know, I need to say goodbye to it an hour of that and say hello to an hour of Bible reading. You know, it's always something that we could tweak and work on in our lives. So as I uh, realize and, and, and accept those things for me, I encourage you all to do the same things for yourself, you know. Learn what it is that you need to say goodbye to, accept those areas, and do your best. You know, some things don't come easy. You know, it's not like magic. It's not uh, things that we can just shut off instantaneously all of the time unless we absolutely have to. Then we have no other choice. But sometimes it may take a process, and if so, that is okay. But just don't allow it to stay too long to the point where you live in regret later. I wish I had done such and such X, Y, Z years ago. So I just encourage you uh, to be blessed, to realize it is okay to have to say goodbye sometimes. And we're always going to be faced with it at one point or another. Uh, again, whether it's a person, a place, a habit, a location, um, a, a, a love relationship that we have to let go of. Whatever it is that may be fostering harm, re inner regrets, you know, um, keeping you up at night in a negative way, adding stress to your body, to your mind, you know, which leads to other 
health problems and other mental um, dysfunction within, don't allow those things to foster too long to where we can't take them back. So if it's something you know that you need to say goodbye to right now, be willing to do that. Be willing to accept that challenge for yourself and take the necessary steps to do it. Again, you may need counseling through it. You may need supportive ears and eyes. You know, you may need someone to provide some resources for you to take that next step or that next move. And it will definitely take prayer and faith. Those tools, you know, we can't get enough of. So to help us to close out these things, always keep those things in mind as we go along. And remember, again, even though you may not know what's on the end of that closed door, your future can be so much brighter after you do it. You never know what promises lie ahead sometimes until we cut out those things that we have to leave and say goodbye to. I am Sabrina Brown again. I encourage you. I bless you. I pray that you enjoyed this podcast. I can be reached at www.ablsandpoetrybooks.com. My email address is brown sabrina and that's s a b r i n a 97 at gmail.com. So you can reach me either one of those ways. And my contact information is on the website as well. Again, that's www.ablsandpoetrybooks.com. I love you for listening. I hope that you're encouraged and blessed by it. And I'm out. Thank you very much. God bless.